What's going on everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe and healthy. If you had to take a COVID test over the weekend, I hope you have tested negative. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update for Monday, July 24th, 2023. We last saw you yesterday when we did the wastewater update. We were going to do a pandemic update in the afternoon, but two things had happened. Number one, it was a very slow uh, news day. I actually didn't find a lot of stuff until later on in the evening. And at that point, I already said, you know what, I'm just not going to do a pandemic update. And I was just in one of those moods where... I just didn't feel like doing anything, and that is a part of long COVID that does happen sometimes, so I finally made the decision in the afternoon saying, you know what, it's just not going to happen today, and plus, when there's not enough data out there, there it really, like, we would have been just repeating some numbers from Friday, I wasn't finding many news stories, but Again, last night that changed. I got alerted to a few things, and I found quite a few things. So let's go through some of those things. And then we did get a Walgreens update today. And unfortunately, spoiler alert, this will probably make you stick around. It's not the best of an update. So stick around, and you will see that. Starting off here with India. India recorded 47 new cases. The um, active caseload is at 1,464, and the total number of deaths is at 531,915, which that number has stayed the same for quite some time now. I don't recall the last time that we've seen any new deaths reported from India. We did get this week's update out of New Zealand. New Zealand reports 3,764 new cases with 119 people in the hospital, and their deaths for this week are at... Let's see here, 24. 24 more people have died in New Zealand in the past week. This is one of the things I was alerted to last night. You've probably heard me say this before. U.S. Senator Dick Durbin tests positive for COVID. He's not only had COVID one time, he's not only had it two times, this is now his third time with the virus. And to my knowledge, someone correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there are any other senators or even anyone in Congress that has had COVID three times. We've had several second time, um, you know, positives, but I don't recall seeing any third times. I'll, I'll have to look. I'll get back to you on that, but uh, I don't recall seeing anyone else three times. And here's the interesting fact. So he released this information on Twitter that he tested positive. He said he's going to, you know, isolate, quarantine, and follow the advice of his doctors. What he did not say was, that he was mild or having no symptoms. He left that out this time. So, who knows? Maybe he's having a rougher go with the virus. This go around. Now we move on to this. South Korea is loosening some of its restrictions in August for COVID. I didn't know they had any restrictions less, but whichever ones are left, they're getting loosened. South Korea plans to loosen COVID-19 restrictions and lower its infectious disease rating as early as the beginning of August, said the Ministry of Health and Welfare and Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency on Sunday. So, yep, yet again, another country is loosening restrictions, and we know when we start to pay less attention to the virus, we start to let our guard down, that's when new variants could pop at any time. And we saw what XBB116 did over in India when it had a sudden rapid surge. So, not good to see that they are doing this. Now we have to report something in relation to football. Yes, I know, it's not football season yet. Yes, I know, training camp has not started yet, but a Marquise Goodwin is not going to be attending training camp. He is having issues with blood clots. Now, I don't know whether he's ever had COVID or not. I don't see any reports on that. I've looked a little bit, didn't find anything. But he is having blood clots in his lungs and in his legs, and it's causing shortness of breath. And he is going to be missing the start of training camp. Alrighty, moving on to this in the world of tennis. Novak Djokovic has withdrawn from the National Bank Open due to fatigue. Now, we know. He is not vaccinated, and he has had COVID, so therefore, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we can put a direct link to COVID. I, I shouldn't do that. Some people get mad at me. Oh, you claim everything is because of COVID, and sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I get that, but in this case, 
he's withdrawing from an event because he is dealing with fatigue. So, I mean, it is a health-related issue. Let's put it that way. Then we move on to this. And uh, Shaka Hislop has collapsed on live TV. He is a sports commentator for ESPN. He was supposed to do an event over the weekend, and, well, that quickly got messed up. They had to go to commercial break. They come back from commercial break, and guess what? He's not there because he suffered a medical emergency. He collapsed on TV. Now, moving on to this. Paramore postpones a San Francisco show hours before the show is scheduled to start due to an illness within the band. And I did not see what the illness actually is, but as you know, people don't always disclose whether or not they have a case of COVID or what it is. I mean, there's a lot of different health issues going around, and we've seen this several times with the various different um, celebrities, concerts, musicians, I mean, actors, we, they just don't always disclose what's going on, and sometimes it does turn out to be that they had COVID, so we'll just have to wait and see what the verdict is from that. All right, moving on to this. We did get BNO's weekly update. How about this? We're actually doing it on time for once. Weekly U.S. COVID update. Early signs of an increase in cases. New cases, 54,951. The average is 50,367. That's up by 303. States reporting, 33 out of 50. In the hospital, 7,950. That's up by 12. In the ICU, 1,000. 125. That's actually down by 13. New deaths, 639. The average is 715. That dropped by 18. But this was tweet one of four. And I think they're going to be trying something a little bit different. Let's just read a little bit more. There are early signs that cases are increasing in some parts of the U.S., which was also confirmed by the CDC last week. And that's true. The CDC did uh, say that Cases are starting to increase. In New York, the number of case, reported cases increased by 25% week over week. We're also experimenting with a new model to estimate the number of cases in states where it is no longer made public. This is based on hospital admissions for this week. We estimate at least 35,065 missing cases, which puts the total at 90,000. 16 new cases so really we did miss a lot of cases in the united states last week and remember there's a lot of people that don't get tested and there's also estimates just based on wastewater that say the number is probably actually higher than this almost double from ninety thousand. so yes there are a lot of cases ongoing out there that do not get reported on let's take a look at the air quality for today who's having good air quality who's having bad air quality. And unfortunately, it's a mixed picture here. If you're in the Rocky Mountains, not so bad. If you're in the East, things are gradually, slowly but gradually starting to get worse. And I think that's going to be a problem throughout the week. There's a lot of heat expected in the Northeast. And this is where we do our daily pitch for my other channel. We do have another channel called Climate Data Report going to be talking about that this week. That's going to be the big thing we're going to be talking about is the heat in the east. The south has been seeing the heat. Now the east is going to see the heat. And this is where climate and weather come together. There's going to be a lot of heat related illnesses in the, um, not climate and weather, but climate and these pandemic updates come together. There's going to be a lot of heat related illnesses on the east coast and in the south. And you know what? Potentially in the Great Lakes as well. Look at these air qualities. We're starting to see another round of wildfire smoke. This one is not nearly as bad as the other ones, but, you know, we're seeing numbers above 100, which is concerning to see. So keep an eye on that. Bad air quality expected to get worse in the east this week. And heat-related illnesses. For more on that, check out my other channel at Climate Data Report. All right. I know you've been very patient. You've been waiting for this. It is time now for the weekly Walgreens update. We're not going to do all the states here. We're going to do some today, some tomorrow, and a few the next day. You can see there's a lot of white states here. The states in white do not update. The ones in red are increasing. The ones in green are decreasing. And yes, let's get into this. So current week's positivity is 37.4%. Prior week was 33.9%. Difference of up 3.5%. However, testing 
is down just ever so slightly. I think I still want to call this a legitimate rise. So 1,865 tests this week, 1,905 last week. Let's take a look at some states. Connecticut. We expected to see Connecticut rise. If you watched my wastewater video yesterday, I think we went through almost every wastewater site in Connecticut, and just about all of them were rising, and some of them were going literally straight up. If you live in Connecticut, I have bad news for you. I am super, super concerned what's going on there. Your hospitalizations are going to rise soon. Your cases are already on the rise. It is not a good situation in Connecticut right now. Connecticut is one of my top concern states for the entire country at the moment, as is Florida, but we won't go there. There's another reason for that, but Connecticut, is it's just bad. So current week's positivity is at 25%, prior week 18.2%. That's a difference of up 6.8%, and if you think, oh, well, maybe testing's down. No, testing is up. Now, it's not a lot of testing. 16 tests versus 11, but it's a legitimate rise. It's backed up by wastewater. Their cases are rising. Everything right now is rising in Connecticut, and I'm pretty sure we'll soon see hospitalization data and death data to uh, go along with this. So please take extra precautions if you're in Connecticut. Another state which I am concerned about is New Jersey. New Jersey is a huge tourist state right now at the shore points. Connecticut is too. There are beach areas from New Haven on northeastward that are popular. I know there's some south there, but I think the most popular area is northeast of New Haven. You get the New London, all those different areas. But uh, New Jersey, bad news here as well. Another legitimate rise, I have to tell you about. 26.3% positivity this week, 19.1% last week. That's a difference of up 7.2%. And testing is up by 10. 57 tests versus 47, so that's not good to see either. And let's just keep on going here. Let's go with another state that's rising. Let's take a look here at Maryland. Maryland, yes, another legit rise. 26.1% positivity this week, 23.8% last week, and that's a difference of up 2.3%, and testing is up as well. 23 tests versus 21 test. How about Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania, for some reason, is dropping. I'm not so certain I'm going to take the face value of this number. 20% positivity this week, 29.2% last week, down 9.2%, uh, 20 tests versus 24 last week. Yes, it may be dropping, but I am having some people tell me, and I am finding out for myself, that uh, cases are rising in some parts of Pennsylvania. There are incidences of rising cases at minute clinics, pharmacies, uh, testing sites. They are saying that, no, we are finding more positive tests at this time. So maybe some parts of Pennsylvania are not rising. Maybe some parts are. I don't know. But mind you of this, there was the Pocono 400 race. Is it five? It used to be called 500. The Pocono race was this past weekend. And uh, the 76,000 people that were jam-packed into NASCAR. If I showed you a picture of what it looks like up there, you'd be like, what? All those people are crammed together? Yes, that happens here in Pennsylvania. And there's a whole bunch of other things. There's a lot of summer festivals ongoing, so I would be uh, safe to say that Pennsylvania is probably not actually dropping at this time. Let's come down to Virginia. Virginia is also rising. 38.9% uh, positivity. Prior week was 25.7%. That's a difference of 13.2% up. And 36 tests versus 35. Just one more, but man, that's a big uh, positivity increase. That's not good to see. Let's do two more. We'll do one more that's rising, one more that's dropping. Then we'll do more of these tomorrow. And Indiana, 27.3% positivity this week. A difference of up. 14.8%. Prior week was 12.5%. 22 tests versus 32. So testing did drop by 10. And finally, we come over here to Arizona. 32.6% positivity this week. 35.3% last week. That's a difference of down 2.7%. And testing down as well. 46 versus 51. I don't know what events are ongoing for the summertime in Arizona right now. So for the moment, I'm going to say... Yeah, I guess this is a legitimate drop. Alrighty, moving on to uh, wastewater. As you know, 
uh, the majority of the regions are rising with exceptions to California. California, or excuse me, the West Coast is dropping fairly significantly at this time. There is a drop there, and there's an ever so slight decrease in the Midwest. I don't know if that's actually going to hold. The biggest increase, though, is the Northeast, and a big factor of that is, well, New York State's rising, but you also just saw Connecticut. I mean, things are super concerning with what's going on in Connecticut and let's take a look at these uh, wastewater sites for a second I just want to go back and take a look here I mean here's Connecticut here's a New Haven site rising here's another New Haven site rapidly rising here's Fairfield that's rising slightly but you come here to Hartford rising I mean we're seeing these sites that are rising here's one that actually is dropping here's one that's actually flat but again the majority of these are rising what's going on with this one back here Okay, this one is slightly dropping, but it's not as big of a site. Again, the biggest sites that we look at in Connecticut, again, here's New Haven. It is rapidly rising, and I mean, this is concerning. Here's another one in New Haven, rapidly rising. These beach areas, now New Haven's not all beach areas. There's colleges there as well. The colleges haven't come back yet, but right along here, what I'm showing you, and I hope it's highlighting it to you, this is all beach territory. And uh, I would suspect, because it's summertime and there's more people there right now, there is an increase in COVID cases. Alrighty, moving on to the variants for this week. We'll just do the ones above 10%, and we'll also do this one here too. Uh, XBB 116 is at 14.8%. XBB 191 is at 13.2%. XBB 2.3 is at 13%. XBB 1.5 is at 12.3%. The all... Important, EG.5 is at 11.4%. XBB 1.16.6 is at 9.3% this week. Alrighty, taking a look at some data from emergency department visits. We do know that emergency department visits are up in many states. They're down in some states, but not very many. And the rest are either stable or did not report. Alrighty, now let's take a look at a couple of those wastewater sites that show other things such as monkeypox, norovirus, flu, and COVID as well. Uh, today we will start off, let's start off in Ohio today. How about what's going on here in uh, Youngstown, Ohio area? See, we see COVID is rising there. Influenza not being an issue, RSV not an issue. HMPV was an issue and now it's not. And look at this, there was some monkeypox detected back on June 20th, so someone in that area had a case of monkeypox. Neurovirus is uh, it's a slight issue at this time, but not terrible. Let's do two more sites, shall we? Let's come down here to Arkansas. How about we do Arkansas? What's going on here in Harrison, Arkansas? And this wastewater site has 15,000 people serviced. COVID dropping at this time. Influenza, not an issue. RSV, not an issue. HMPV, not an issue. Norovirus, it's there at low levels at this time, and it is dropping ever so slightly. Monkeypox is not an issue. And how about we give some attention to Florida? We haven't given any attention to Florida today. Let's see. Let's try this South Orange uh, wastewater facility where there's 183,009 people service. Coronavirus has been rising after a slight drop. There was a drop. It is starting to rise again. Influenza, not an issue. RSV, not an issue. HMPV, not an issue. Monkeypox is not being detected at this time, and norovirus is at low levels. Alrighty, moving on. Let's take a look at New Jersey. New Jersey today reports 164 people in the hospital. Six people are on a ventilator in the ICU, 20 people in the ICU, and discharges are at 13. Moving on now to Philadelphia, my city here. And you can see there are 788 EMS incidents reported on Sunday. I did not see the weekend uh, report. Let's see. Sometimes they do. Okay, here it is. They finally did report it. For the weekend, there were 1,581 EMS incidents in Philadelphia. Remember, 800 a day or higher is a concern, and I can report this to you. One of those EMS incidents over the weekend did occur right out here on my block. We had a neighbor that was um, shortness of breath, had to be rushed to the hospital. 
I'm really hoping she pulls through. She's 93 years old. So, yes, one of the incidents was right here in my own neighborhood. And I suspect there's going to be a high volume of incidents this week. Not only because of uh, levels of virus increasing from people going on vacations or whatever, but uh, it's going to be a very hot week here in Philadelphia. We're going to have temperatures in the mid to upper 90s late weeks with uh, heat indexes over 100. So heat-related illness is going to be on the rise. Let's take a look at what's going on in a suburban area of uh, Philadelphia. And we see, wow, a lot of accidents right now, but we're not concerned about that. 10 total um, EMS incidents at this time. And speaking of accidents, accidents actually are up since the start of pandemic. That's a national statistic across the country. Look it up. Maybe one day we'll actually do a video where we just um, talk about things that have gotten worse since the start of COVID, such as accidents or anything else. Hmm, maybe there's a video idea. Taking a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania, which is also a suburb of Philadelphia. Wow, some bad calls here. Stroke, sick person, respiratory difficulty, cardiac arrest, sick person, stroke, respiratory difficulty. Not a lot of calls, but the calls that they are seeing are not good ones. These are all bad calls. Wow. Not good to see. All right, New York State, and I'm going to move myself back to the right. 306 people tested positive on the most recent update. 7.6% is the uh, last positivity update, but the seven-day average is now 7.7%. So that's telling me that probably some point over the weekend, they probably had a positivity that was over 8%. They didn't do an update, so we don't know what actually it hit over the weekend. It may be here on the charts somewhere. I don't know. But uh, taking a look at some of these positivities, look at this. Green County, New York, 33% positive. Albany's now at 10%. Schenectady is at 16.7%. What county is this? Livingston County, New York State, is at 50%. Ontario County is at 40%. Monroe, 13.8%. Wow, there are some uh, really bad positivity rates in New York State. Dutchess County, 16.7%, and I'll just leave it at that. That is, wow, that is really bad. Come on, people. If uh, there is some way you can get tested and it's not going to cost you anything, by all means, please go out and get tested. All right, taking a look at New York State hospitalizations, and we see, uh, we'll do New York City first, actually. Excuse me. Uh, 192 people are in the hospital in New York City with 25 people in the ICU. And this is as of the last update from last week. They did finally put the number out today, but this goes back to the last week. We won't see how we start the new week until tomorrow, and we can assume that we're going to start the week with hospitalizations up. Taking a look at the statewide level, New York State is at 448 people in the hospital, 53 people in the ICU. Already, let's do a little bit of an international update here. Taking a look around the world, cases are down 78% and deaths are down 57%. Remember, these uh, percentages, like the percentage drop, it will always be a biggest drop on a Monday because a lot of countries just do not report over the weekend. Maybe this doesn't update frequently over the weekend. So yes, cases down 78% and deaths down 57% around the world. But let's go through a few countries. Australia is actually seeing an increase in cases by 4%. Deaths are down by 37%. Coming down here to Russia, cases are down 16%. Deaths are down 14%. And then taking a look at Dominican Republic, 19% increase in cases. They did not report any deaths. And taking a look at Thailand, cases are down 49%. Deaths are down 44%. Israel is reporting an 8% increase in cases again. Remember, Israel is one of those, like a fishing line, bouncing off the bottom places. And they've been doing that for quite some time. 14% decrease in deaths. That works out to 6 versus 7. And continuing on down here, we can see here that Afghanistan has seen a 6% decrease in cases. They did not report any deaths this week. Canada is reporting an 88% decrease in cases, but mind you, Canada does not do that much in the way of testing like they used to. And we mentioned New Zealand earlier. New Zealand is probably a huge, huge undercount of the cases as well. Switzerland is reporting a 12% increase in cases this week. And we'll just do one more. Myanmar, 18% decrease in cases, no deaths reported there. Alrighty, that does it for today's pandemic update. We will have another pandemic update again 
tomorrow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you have a friend or you know someone who is continuously telling you the pandemic is over, that it is not an issue anymore, by all means, please share this channel with them or share my videos with them and prove to them that they are wrong and that the pandemic is not over and that COVID is still a big deal. I mean, we just showed you several medical emergencies today of things that, you know, weren't always happening prior to the pandemic. So, yes, it is still an issue. And we also just showed you several places such as Connecticut. Can't say the word Connecticut enough that where cases are rapidly rising. So if you know someone who needs to see this, by all means, share this with them. Alrighty. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all again next time. But until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. See you tomorrow.